Okay, I know this is going to ruffle some feathers out there, but I am not a gamer. But I can edit some pretty awesome gaming subtitles in DaVinci Resolve, and I'm gonna show you how to do it. Now, in order to actually edit gaming subtitles, I need some gameplay to work with. Where would I find that? This is Gus, my brother. He's basically a walking meme. Caption that in the comments. Anyways, I got him to give me a few minutes of Fortnite gameplay to work with. And now let's jump over to DaVinci Resolve and we'll get started. Okay, so like any logical editor, you want to cut down your gameplay before you add in your subtitles because, I mean, why not, right? Step two, create a subtitle track on top of everything. Give it a name. I'm going to be as creative as I possibly can for this. Awesome. Step three, add in your text plus from your effects. We're going to use text plus because A, it's better than regular text, B, it works in Fusion, but we're doing this mainly for that second point. We're going to need to go into Fusion for our animation stuff. It's gonna be great. Don't worry about the big scary node graphs. We're literally adding two nodes. Step four, lock your video and audio tracks that you don't want affected by cutting the subtitles. That's also the next step. One thing I wanted to do was add a stroke to each of the subtitles in order to distinguish between myself and my brother. You know how Tommy Innit does for his videos when he has multiple people in his gameplay? <laughs> I'll be the red color because, well, red hoodie, and Gus will be blue. To make this whole process of coloring all the subtitles a lot easier, I decided to color the individual clips on the timeline so I could visually see what I'm working with. Basically, you need to right click on the clips that you want to color and select a color. Curiously, there isn't any red, but that's okay. I'll just use something that looks like red. Then, since all the clips are colored, if I make an adjustment to the color of one stroked text, I can then alt click and drag to the other clips that are supposed to be that same color on the timeline. Step five, no six. It's six. Step six is to adjust the timing and the words of each of the subtitles. Remember to take your time with this one, and you don't have to make every single word individually. For each line of the subtitles, I made anywhere between one to three words per line, but you can do whatever you want depending on your style. There. The rough cut's done. Step seven is to grab a cross dissolve transition and put it over the start of your text plus. And all you gamers out there are probably freaking out because you don't want to have a freaking cross dissolve on your subtitles. And you're absolutely right, I don't either. But this is where the magic is gonna happen. One thing you have to keep in mind when you're making this cross dissolve is the length. Start with it shorter and then you won't have to worry about it not looking clean when you try to shorten it later. Plus with gaming subtitles, the animation is only supposed to be a few frames long. From there, right click and select convert to fusion cross dissolve. Then right click again and then select open in fusion page. Now for step eight, press shift space and type XF for transform. We'll need a transform node to actually animate these subtitles. Go to the first frame and make a keyframe on the X and Y coordinates as well as the size. Then move the Y down until the text is out of frame and make the size a little bit smaller. Next, go up to the end of the transition and move the Y up until it's at 0.5. Or you can just type it in. That, that works too. The size should be at 1 as well. And the keyframe should automatically be added since you moved the variable. Go back one frame and adjust the size so now it's a little bit bigger and move the Y up as well. Now if we play back our animation, we can see it bounces into frame. Frame. To smooth all the keyframes out, go up to the spline panel and click and drag over all the graph animations. Type Shift S and that will make the animations instantly smoother. Now, one thing we can add to make this all look so much more professional is the motion blur. Go up to your inspector and find the motion blur. Bump up the quality to around 12 and that should be plenty for your animation. Step 9. Yes, that was a very long step eight. We need to add a keyframe structure so that way we can lengthen our transition in the edit tab and the animation will change with it. In the keyframe stretcher, the source start and end should be the same as the transitions start and end as far as frames go. Then select the part in the middle that you want to stretch and call it good. Step 10, go into the edit page. Now, right click and select new transition preset. Name it, something creative. There we go. Then go up to the inspector, video transitions, user, and then find the preset that you just made. Drag it in and adjust how you want. Then to copy it over to all the other subtitles, simply alt drag again, and then you're done. Yep, that's it for this video. But if you're going to be making some insane gaming YouTube videos, then you're probably gonna need a thumbnail. So watch this video here where I show you how to do just that. See you guys. Oh yeah, and don't forget to like and subscribe.